and all my imperfections you'll use. Um, I uh, came up with this, this talk and I reached out to Kay and she found this song. I have never heard it. And uh, it made me verklempt. <laughs> it just was so emotional and I thought, wow, wow. So before I start talking, I just want to make sure, did everybody get an index card and a crayon or pencil when they came in? And if not, just raise your hand and I think uh, Judy will bring you one. There you go, thanks. Okay, so what I wanted to do, um, I want to introduce myself and share my story with you. Um, and it's a story of imperfection. And so I think to get to know me better, I've been coming here probably for almost a year now. Um, but I wanted to tell you that I uh, started out being very passionate about religion and God. And uh, I grew up Catholic. And uh, I was the fourth child of four, and we were all blonde. And my parents, I, I remember when I was a kid, they would march us down the row, and we sat in the front row, and we were the perfect kids. <laughs> you know, we just all sat there, and everybody like, look at that Miller family. They're so pretty, and they're so perfect. And I was very, I very, very, very committed to working at CCD. I actually taught second grade religion. I worked at the Catholic Church. I painted the hallways. I volunteered on the playground. I built little goodie bags. And some of you might remember the Xerox machines, those little black Kinko machines you'd make handouts with. You'd go in early and you'd run them through. I drew pictures of Noah's Ark and, and, and all the characters in Noah's Ark. And I would tell the Noah story and I would print them out and have the kids color them always passionate about that, very passionate about my connection to all that is. And uh, one day, though, I was in service, and when I started getting older, and I was about 12, I started realizing that I was gay. And the minister up there was starting to say all these horrible things about me. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, aren't I the guy that just painted the, the church hall? And didn't I just give goodie bags to the kids? And don't I really love, each, love people just because? And so I want to tell you my imperfection. It made me walk away. It made me walk away from God. And I just, I, I walked out of the church. I, I closed the door and I said, if you can't love me for who I am, then I'm done. And I literally, I cut the word God out of my language. Just, there was, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as a God. I just, there's no God. I cut it out. And so I went on with my life. At the same time, I'll tell you another story of imperfection. Um, I was passionate about art. And in Pittsburgh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, they would have art classes at Carnegie Mellon. And all the kids would, would get driven down and we'd stand in front of Carnegie Mellon with boards and crayons and we'd go into this huge auditorium and we would go and draw, and Mr. Fitzgerald would stand up on the stage, and he would teach, and he'd say, this is how you make shadow. And this was a huge auditorium. This is bigger than the Meyerson. I don't know if you've been to Pittsburgh. There was tons of kids in there. Kids from all over the suburbs were brought in. Tons. Well, one day, and you can tell, maybe already, I'm a talker. I love to talk. One day I was sitting there and the girl behind me, she tapped on my back and I turned to talk to her and Mr. Fitzgerald was teaching and he turned and he said, you, get up, get out. And he said, get up and walk out. And I had to pick up my crayons, my board. My brother was sitting there. He was just like, blah, 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 right? And I had to walk out and I'm, I'm not kidding you, but there were tears, tears of people watching. And I had to walk out. That wasn't the worst part. I had to sit outside the door, and when the class ended, they all filed past me. It was talk about a walk of shame. So I did the same thing with art, with creativity, with my ability to create. I put it in a box. I went home. I got in the car with my dad, and I said, I will never do this again. I'm not an artist either. I'm, I'm not a spiritual person, and I'm not an artist. So, it was a long time coming, um, long time, when I just totally closed those areas out. But one day, one day I came home to my roommate, and she was reading a book, and I was out partying, and I said, what are you reading? 
And she said, oh, I'm reading Shotkey Guan. And she told me what it was about. And I was like, uh, uh, God? This is about God? I don't do God. I said, I don't do God. And she looked at me and goes, hmm, what if you use a different name? I said, what? She goes, what if you use a different name? I said, like, what do you mean use a different name? It's God. You can't use a different name. She goes, yes, you can. Call it whatever you want. And I was like, that seems like it's cheating. <laughs> And she said, no, it's not cheating. Try it. And so I went out and I thought, okay. And I pondered this thought for years, years. Hmm. Hmm. What if there is a God, but it's not God? What if it's different? What if it has a different name? What if it has a different name? What if this power, this energy source, this greater than all things source, this, that's through all of us has a different name. And it wasn't until I started painting and so I am known, I don't know if you know this, I'm known as the spiritual artist, and I wrote a book about it. I was painting one day, and if any of you have done anything creative, and you all have, there's that moment, you know that moment? And I did this last night. I went in, and I had my easel there, and I pulled out the colors, and oh my God, oh my God, um, ba -bum, ba -bum, bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. the flow, what was going on, what was going on? All the fears were gone, all the worries of tomorrow. I was in this wonderful place, this wonderful moment, this wonderful presence of now in painting. And yet, I looked at the painting and I said, well, I didn't do that. Something came through me. I felt it. How many of you had that experience where you felt something flowing through you when you're writing or reading or jogging or exercising or knitting or cooking or singing? Perfect, right? You feel it. You're like, there is a voice coming through me. So that is my story of my journey. But I wanted to talk about this idea of imperfection. These things that I was told that were imperfections, and I can only see that now, 30 years later, were actually blessings. They were actually blessings. So right now, I want you to think about your own lives. You have an index card, and I want you to think about something. I'm sure when you walked in here today, there's something, right? You're carrying something on your shoulders, and you're like, something's weighing you down, whether you're worried about your health, whether you're worried about finances, whatever. I want you to write it down on the card. What are you worrying about? Take a minute. I'll just give you a minute to ponder. Take a minute to write down on that card what worry you have. What do you think is one of your imperfections right now? What do you think is one of your imperfections? Oh, I want to tell you, you will not share this. You will not have to stand up. You'll have to not tell anybody, not even the person next to you. This is a personal reflection. What baggage are you carrying right now that you think is imperfection in you? Now, below that word, I want you to write, how does it make you feel? So you've listed what it is. How does it make you feel? And I'm going to tell you my story right now. Two years ago, I was diagnosed with psoriasis. I never had anything like psoriasis. So immediately, I just did sort of what I did before with what I called an imperfection is I ignored it. I'm ignoring it. So my feeling was depression. So the condition, psoriasis, the feeling was depression. So underneath your word, what right, depression, the imperfection, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel powerless? Does it make you feel a victim? Does it feel, make you feel sad? Does it make you feel angry? Because we have all these responses. We're human. It's part of being human. Okay? Is everybody ready? Everybody got something down? Show of hands? Back there, too. <laughs> Yay. Okay. All right. So the concept I want to share with you, which I think is really amazing, is how do we work with that? How do we transmute that? And what I realized is that my imperfection, which really wasn't, but my 
feeling of imperfection of being gay, how did that help me? And you know, I realized it made me connect more with other people. I meet other people and they, they, people feel very comfortable. They'll tell me everything. They just tell me what they feel. I'm this way, I have this, I have this, because I don't judge them. My being judged so severely has helped me not judge others. What, what a neat little gift of imperfection, right? So I realized that even though it's not easy, and let me tell you, it's still not easy. Look at the media. Look at the, what's going on right now. There's so much coming back. I feel like, wait a minute, I thought we achieved things. I'm married now, and I've raised a child. And, but there's so much going on with being gay. It's still a challenge, but it, it has forced me, forced me, the gift that God gave me was forcing me to see love in others. And I will tell you the truth. I told Rick this right before we started this, and Kay, this is freaking me out a little bit. I'm standing in a church. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I walked all the way. I walked away from this. But, but somehow, I've walked all the way around, and now I'm back. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And, and there was a moment earlier today where I was like, I can't believe I'm going to stand up. Because I went, I've been speaking to art groups. I've been speaking to people about spiritual principle. But there was a fear of this, of coming back to a church. And so, but what it's taught me is I do. I practice that. I practice seeing love in everyone. So I want to read this little quote that Brene uh, also included in her book. May we find the courage to let go of who we think we're supposed to be so that we can fully embrace our authentic selves, the imperfect, the creative, the vulnerable, the powerful, the broken, and the beautiful. May we show ourselves and others the compassion that comes from knowing that we are all made of strength and struggle. I want you to realize, I noticed that everybody in here wrote something down. We are all carrying baggage, feelings of imperfection. It's what unites us. It, it unites us in, when we recognize that we're all the same and we love each other. And what I love so much about this church of one, love, what a wonderful name, right? What a wonderful name. I love how Reverend Melinda has said, she's replaced that word God that I was so afraid of, right? With a better word, love. Because love heals us. Love heals us. And when we accept who we are and we can love who we are, we love each other more. And I know that when I walk into this space, Perry was telling me, Chris, this is a safe space. Everybody's nice here. And she's right. You are, you are, and it's wonderful to feel that. So, may we show ourselves and others the compassion that comes from knowing that we are all made of strength and struggle. May we create a just and equitable world where privilege isn't a prerequisite for self-expression and authenticity, where everyone feels invited and safe to express their power and their vulnerability. And last, may we experience the strength of connection, the love of belonging, and the grace of pure joy. So I think that's just such a wonderful presence in this space that we have here. This wonderful presence of pure joy. Okay. And so I want you to note this wonderful poem again, and this uh, wabi-sabi, the art of imperfection, that pottery. How many of you are familiar with that term? It's a Japanese term that when they take something broken, like a piece of pottery, they actually seal it together with a molten gold or a metal, and they reestablish it because they believe there's a beauty in imperfection. There's a beauty in imperfection. And so I want you to embrace the beauty of your imperfections. I want you to embrace that. So I want to leave one more thing that I, I, you know, once I start thinking about a concept, I start seeing it everywhere. Are you all familiar with that synchronicity? 
So uh, this Pima Chodron, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I love her. Love her. So I want to read this to you. The alternative to this struggle, the struggle of embracing our imperfections, is to train in holding the rawness of vulnerability in our heart. Did you hear that? You have to accept the vulnerability. Through this practice, we can eventually accustom our nervous systems to relaxing with the truth, to relaxing with the impermanent, uncontrollable nature of things. We can slowly increase our ability to expand rather than contract, to let go rather than cling. Every time we practice holding the rawness of vulnerability in our heart, we gain a little insight into how things really are. We experience directly how nothing ever stays the same, even for a moment. I want to read that again because it's something I've come to terms with lately. Nothing ever stays the same, even for a moment. We can't make anything stand still, even if we try. What we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and think about is constantly changing. Even our heaviest, most unpleasant emotions have no solidity to them. Even our unpleasant emotions have no solidity to them. Okay. So we're going to go into a meditation. I want you to join me. I want you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Breathe in this wonderful room, this wonderful space, this wonderful space outlined under the definition of love. I want you to have that card in your hand, but I want you to hold it lightly. And I want you to put it up next to your heart, that card. And I want you to think about what you claimed was your imperfection. Lightly. It's transient. All things change. There's a gift in it. There's a knowing in it. You might not know it now, but it will come. There is a special gift in all things that happen, for God is in all things. So hold that to your chest, and then think about the feeling, and let yourself, as Pema tells us, let yourself feel it. Feel the emotion completely right now. Realizing, of course, it's just an emotion. I might be depressed about psoriasis. You might have your own issue, but it's just an emotion. And guess what? It is transient. It will pass. But more importantly, I want you to let your spirit self rise above this room and notice that everybody in this room has their own issues, their own challenges, and love them and see the God in everything. See the God in everything and rise up higher and you can see the God in the whole state of Texas and all the way, believe it or not, up into Oklahoma and all this country and see this whole planet held together by a space of love. So there is perfection in the imperfection of the world. There's beauty in all things. While you're here, take a deep breath. Settle in your chair. Know that all is well. And then come back to yourself and see that card. I want you to, in your mind's eye, take that card and uh, tie it to a colored balloon. You're going to tie the card and the feeling to a colored balloon. And you're not going to push it away. You're just going to let it float away. That feeling is just transient. It comes and goes. For you are based in love. You are based in love and spirit has you. Thank you. Amen.